It affects 5,000 people alone in South Yorkshire and over 1,300 of those will be bed-bound or house-bound. So their voices aren't heard, they're suffering in silence. It's therefore all our job to make their voices heard, to challenge the myths and the stereotypes that have been allowed to perpetuate and to back the calls of the Millions Missing campaign. I have no doubt that in the next two decades, the stories of the millions missing, of the terrible mistreatment of this illness, will be recognized as one of the biggest human rights violations in recent medical history. But for me and other sufferers, for our friends and families, and for the people who are healthy now, but who will get sick in the next few years, we don't have time to wait. There are already patients alive today who have been bedbound or housebound for decades. Lost generations who are only now beginning to have their voices heard. And we must speak out now because we don't want to be part of another lost generation. We want to be part of the one that's found. Because of a lack of awareness from doctors and social services, one in five families of children with ME have had child protection referrals made against them. 50% of these referrals are made because people suspect them of fabricating their child's illness. NICE are now rewriting their guidelines, but this process is slow. And in the meantime, the outdated recommendations are still in place. Every city joining us across the UK and every patient who was made bedbound by graded exercise is demanding an immediate suspension of these treatments before more patients are harmed. Today's event is so important in drawing attention to the millions of people's lives who are devastated by a condition which isn't properly recognised. And I've worked with a group in raising their voice in Parliament and talking about the need to move away from graded exercise therapy, CBT, and instead to be investing into understanding the condition, to have proper research funding, to understanding the condition so that we can provide people with the support that they need. When I sat down with a constituent a few weeks ago, learning of her life and what ME meant for her, uh, how it restricted what she was able to do, I, I couldn't have got uh, any better understanding than simply sitting down and listening to someone who suffers from the condition explaining to me what it meant to them. Today is an exhausting day. I cannot type. I can barely speak. On days like these, I close my eyes and feel the gentle waves of the sea wash over my mind. And in these waves is peace. I cry for the me that was, was joyfully alive, hungry for life, dancing, laughing, avidly conversing with the world, a world that listened and cared to hear my voice. Once a biomedical scientist, once a runner, once a swimmer, once a cyclist, the me I once knew is gone. Eli, eight years old, missing since 2014. Missing from education, days out, family outings and being a little boy. Life has become a matter of hopeless endurance while I watch my potential slip away day by day. Amy and all of us long for a world in which this kind of event is unnecessary. So let's keep speaking out on behalf of everyone with ME who is struggling with life at whatever level and continue to work towards better research, recognition and services in every way possible. It's about tackling the prejudice and speaking on behalf of those 
who cannot speak for themselves and whose voices are not heard, to bring an end to prejudice in society, to bring an end to prejudice in medical treatment and in all our attitudes towards those who suffer from ME. We'd like to send greetings to the other 89 cities hosting events like this today and that together we can go towards the fashioning of a new world where people with ME can achieve health equality, where people with ME can join in the dancing and where people with ME will ultimately meet a cure.